The Florida Hatchery Program provides fish production, outreach, and education for the public, and aquatic plants for coastal habitat restoration. It's an important addition to marine fisheries research. The Stock Enhancement Program uses applied research to develop technology for breeding and rearing finfish and mollusks to enhance and rebuild coastal fisheries. Species that have been bred and reared include red drum, snook, bay scallops, and queen conch, with primary focus on red drum. Science and technology are being used to raise hatchling red drum, which are then released into Florida waters to supplement the natural population. During the 1980s, redfish were under considerable fishing pressure from both recreational and commercial interests. That's when Florida built a 54-acre fish hatchery in Port Manatee to develop and evaluate stock enhancement as a means of enhancing sport fish populations. A series of ponds were created where fish could be raised to three different sizes before being stocked into coastal waters. The process started by collecting mature red drum from brood stock from the field. These fish were returned to the hatchery and placed in tanks where researchers could control water temperature, the amount of daylight, and other factors so the fish would spawn in captivity. At the time of the spawn, the eggs are collected and counted before being placed in incubators where they hatch and develop into first feeding larvae in three days. Chris Young, research administrator at the Stock Enhancement Facility, describes the feeding process. The rearing process is pretty much similar in ponds or in tanks. We basically are uh, providing live feeds to the first feeding larvae, and then over time, we're transitioning those fish to an artificial diet uh, to grow them to larger target uh, sizes. Before being released, fish batches are identified genetically and, depending on fish size, are marked with internal coated wire tags so that researchers could determine if the stocking was successful and if the stocking strategies are effective. Prior to release, an independent veterinarian examines a fish sample from each stocking group to make sure that hatchery fish are healthy and free from parasites to prevent harm to wild stocks. For 25 years, fish were raised in outside ponds at the hatchery, but now the latest technology makes it possible to raise them indoors in tanks. Researchers are currently developing and refining the intensive fish culture process. Researchers want to make sure hatchery fish are healthy and determine the best time of year and the best habitat to stock them. Through fisheries independent and dependent monitoring along with aquatic health and genetics, some of these fish are recaptured in the wild, identified and their movements tracked to see if they are intermingling with wild stocks. Aquatic health helps to monitor the health of these fish while genetics collects tissue and can identify the broodstock parent's DNA as it relates to the stocked fingerlings. This provides a viable way to track the fish in the field. Coastal marshes form vital habitat for many species of marine fish at some stage of their life. The hatchery has created an affluent treatment marsh. Chris Young explains its purpose. Behind me is our effluent marsh for the hatchery. Uh, it is, we have placed seedlings of Spartina alterniflora, which is common cordgrass. It's a common marsh species throughout Florida and coastal areas. And these plants are removing nutrients from our hatchery effluent so that we will have less of an impact on the environment. These aquatic plants are harvested from the treatment marsh for coastal restoration throughout the Tampa Bay watershed and groups like the Southwest Water Management District, Manatee County Parks and Recreation, and Tampa Bay Watch, all benefit by the availability of Spartina for habitat restoration. 
Spartina is harvested from the hatchery treatment marsh to create or restore marshes in coastal areas where there may have been hurricane damage or habitat destruction. Since 1997, the stock enhancement facility has provided over 1 million plugs and 300,000 single stem shoots for coastal habitat restoration. Future plans call for expanding the operation to produce different grass species for restoration. The outreach and education program plays an integral role in the stock enhancement research facility. The challenge of keeping our fisheries healthy and strong is shared between the dedicated scientists who work diligently to monitor and manage our fish stocks and recreational anglers who are on the scene fisheries managers. Tours are provided for school groups and angling clubs tailored to educate the visitors to the benefits of stock enhancement. It also makes them aware of habitat restoration and the importance of the right habitat for the fish. Each visitor is encouraged to help protect the marine environment and conserve our marine resources. Displays with live fish in tanks are provided for various outdoor shows around the state to help make anglers aware of their responsibilities. Environmental specialist Gina Russo heads this program and points out one of the features at the hatchery. I'm standing in front of our hatchery detention pond. This is the pond in which school group tours and angling clubs can have a special opportunity to catch different marine sport fish such as red drum, common snook, and spotted sea trout. These are the three most sought after sport fish in Florida. It also teaches these anglers how to be stewards of our marine environment. The artificial reef program provides vital information to the critical task of stock assessment. Let's take a look underwater.